Can you hear me? Yes. She just stepped out, you said? Yes, yeah. yeah, she just stepped out for a second. I would go, if you wait a second, I can go get her. That's okay. When she comes back in, we'll talk through again. Okay. Uh, sir, would you introduce yourself? Tell us your name and DOC number. I'm Micah Dane Kilcrease. My DOC number is 719-525. Right, Mr. Kilcrease. You are classified as a second felony offender, currently serving three years for a domestic abuse battery conviction in Livingston, sentenced in January of this year. We have a parole eligibility, which is May 25th, 2023. You don't earn a good time, and you have a full-term date in February of 2024. Does all that sound right? Sounds correct to you? Yes, ma'am. So your case, yes, uh, Mr. Kilcrease, your case has been assigned to me, so I'll start out with the interview process. Uh, if the staff comes back by the time we finish, we'll hear from her, uh, and you'll be allowed to make a statement before we go. So Mr. Kilcrease, as I mentioned, you're a, a second felony offender, but as I review your uh, criminal history, you have quite a history of violent offenses in multiple jurisdictions. Would you say that's a correct statement? Yes, ma'am. Um, and in this particular case, the domestic abuse battery in Livingston, the victim was uh, Ms. Ballard. Yes, ma'am. You're still in a relationship with Ms. Ballard? No, ma'am. And so you have been there at that facility since the end of February of this year. You have a work release job. Hold on one second. One more time. You have been there at that facility since February of this year. Yes. Do you have a work release job? No, ma'am. I work in the kitchen on the compound. Um, and some of the concerning, you have a history of domestic abuse. You have I see a history of violation of protective orders. Yeah, so I'm assuming those are uh, victims other than Ms. Ballard? No, it's all Ms. Ballard. Everything that's on my record is Ms. Ballard. Um, so, so tell us what was going on. With the... With, can domestic you know, abuse battery. Domestic abuse battery. Uh, jail name. No, uh, I Reason lost. Now. Yes, ma'am. Uh, me and her got in an altercation. There was thrown licks between each other, and I lost my temper, and I done something I regret to this day. Okay. Uh, uh, I stabbed her in the leg. And then I see, so let's go back to 2005 in Clinton. There's an aggravated battery with a dangerous weapon. Was that her also? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. That was a guy that I was in school with. Okay. And drug charges in West Feliciana, aggravated robbery, uh, two counts in Texas. Uh, no, one count of aggravated robbery in Texas, and that should have been dropped down to second degree robbery. Simple robbery, I see. Conviction. That was in 2014. Tell us about Tennessee in 2019. Kidnapping, aggravated assault, interference with emergency call, and vandalism. What was that? In Tennessee, there was an, there's an arrest on your record uh, for kidnapping, aggravated assault, and interference with an emergency call. Yes, ma'am. That was uh, false false document. That's why them charges, I was never convicted of them. That was with Miss Ballard. Okay, so were you arrested? No. Uh, yes, ma'am. I spent 45 days in jail, and they dropped all charges, dismissed, and let me go. So you're saying none of that happened? No, ma'am. That that was a false claims. That is, you get an argument or anything? No, ma'am. Jackson Police Department, Tennessee, aggravated assault. That is with Miss Ballard as well. That was in December of 2019. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Galveston Police, Texas, violation of a protective order, May of 2020. 
Yes, ma'am. That's with Miss Ballard, Ballard as well. And then let's see, later uh, that was obtained and that again in June, another violation of the protective order. Yes, ma'am. That was with Miss Ballard as well. So why did you keep violating the protective order? She was wanting to still be in relationship with me. The violation of protection order, she told me she took care of it. And that was my, I take full responsibility for that because I should have stayed away from her and I didn't. Is there a, a pending charge in West Louisiana Parish, Reno? Yes, ma'am. That's with Miss Ballard as well. So that's why you don't have a work release job, I guess. You have that outstanding. Yes, ma'am. What's going on with that? Oh, uh, I don't uh, know. Process. You don't know where you are in that process? No, ma'am, I don't. They arrested me on them charges, and then two days after they arrested me, they released me and let me go, and then I got picked up on these charges that I'm doing time on now. Which is <laughs> was... Ma'am? She's in Livingston out of Livingston. Yes, ma'am. They were supposed to drop all them charges in West Luciana. It's uh, still showing as open uh, uh, records I have. And then you have yet another violation of a protective order after your arrest in Livingston. And that was in February. And then in April, you had another arrest for violation of a protective order. And all of that is really concerning to me. Yes, ma'am. I can understand. Why um, do you believe we should take a chance on you? Well, I've given, changed my life. I take full responsibility for T for all my actions. Um, I haven't, as you know, I've been incarcerated for two years. I haven't gotten in any trouble. I haven't had any write-ups. I've completely given my life over to God, and I've been walking his will in my life. Uh, I'm currently starting good time classes. I am in one FDIC money management class. Uh, so I'm doing everything that's in my power and my possibility to straighten my path up and walk with God. Did you do some anger management class? Uh, if y'all want me to, I will. Yes, ma'am. I have been trying to get. Ma'am. Yes. Yes, ma'am. So you can take it on a Zoom call with you and have a conversation with you? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It never occurred to you to ask to get into that instead of I, money, ma'am? I, I have asked. My risk assessment score was really low and people that score low on their risk assessment score they put into the lower classes like money management did she come back in yet ma'am is she back in the room yet yes ma'am uh, is there anything you can tell us about mr kilcree <laughs> Hey, my name is Cheryl, and I am working admin here. And uh, there's no write-ups in his file. And the only thing that stuck out was that detainer for the ch other charges. But I, I heard that y'all knew about that. So the pending charges. Um, yeah. yeah, OK, since so you already know that. But there is nothing else, because there's no write-ups or anything like that. OK, that's good to hear. Thank you very much. All right, uh, Mr. Kilcrease, I don't see any other questions by my colleagues. Is there a statement you'd like to make before we vote? Uh, I take full responsibility for my actions, for my previous actions. Uh, I just, I give it all over to God. I've changed my life 100% completely, and I'm working on things every day, just a 24-hour process at a time. Um, I would really like to, I have a letter of recommendation from staff that I work here for. If y'all want me to read y'all that as well. No, that's okay. She can fax it over to me. Okay. Okay. I'm concerned about you, uh, your history. 
Yes, uh, no, uh, it's, it's, you've not demonstrated, at least in the record, that you know, you're going to refrain from that kind of abuse. Um, did, did you have opposition that's been expressed? And there is, as far as our record shows, there is an um, open retainer for a similar charge. My vote today, Mr. Kilcrease, is going to be to deny your um, parole based on those factors. Mm -hmm. right. uh, Madam Chairman, I voted the same for the same reason. This is Jack. And Mr. Kilcrease, um, it is concerning. I, I don't know why the relationship between you and the system is so toxic, but it obviously is not a healthy relationship for either one of you, and you're going to need to move on from that. I just don't think you're ready yet, though, so my vote likewise would be to deny. Okay. All right, Mr. Bruce, keep working on yourself. Like you said, today you posted tonight. What did you sir? Yes, ma'am. Can y'all write and refer me to get in the good time classes? Um, we can make a note. We will make a note that you get some additional programming on your on the certificate. Um, so you know, DOC will take a look at it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Y'all have a blessed day. Uh, thank you. That concludes our business at your facility. It's 1248. We will adjourn. Thank you so much for your assistance today. Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you. So, uh, could be he didn't have any write ups while locked up because uh, Miss Ballard wasn't locked up with him. <laughs> um, yeah, you think maybe it's a bad idea to be dating her? Gosh, that was pretty crazy. If it was a drinking game every time he said, yeah, it was with Miss Ballard, we wouldn't have made it halfway through this. He kind of looks like, I don't know why, does he look like a Simpson character, like out of the Simpsons? I actually Googled it to try to find it, and I couldn't find it Googling, but he just he looks like, I don't know why I think that. Um Man, I mean, you do hear about these type of relationships, though, where they just love to hate each other, and it, it will never end well. And I guess the good positive you can take out of it, I don't think they have kids, so they're not putting their kids through this or kids through this. Hopefully, I'm assuming that. It's like... There are people, there are probably a lot of people that are even watching this that are in a relationship that they keep going back to even though the person they're with is uh, hurting them over and over again. But certainly glad the, the board uh, rejected him. He didn't seem to have really any redeeming factors except for not getting any write-ups while locked up. He obviously lied about something that was clearly, you know, a lie, saying, oh, there was nothing happened. They know what happened. I'd love to hear your comments on, on, why, on if you've been in a relationship like this where you kept going back to the abuser and why you feel that you've done that, did that. I just, I would love insight on it. Um, and I think that, that a lot of us, that others who would just be frustrated and maybe victim blaming, um, could, could learn a thing or two if you've been in this experience, um, as to why. With that, I'll let you go.